Jem's a great part. I I really like Jem, but you we did get caught. Me and Alice, who plays Scout, we did get, and obviously um, Sam Turk, who plays mm. Dill. We kind of got caught within that pre-rehearsal mode of going, okay, we're playing kids. How childlike should we go with it? You know, do we want that kind of really kind of almost Blood Brothers y style of we're all playing kids. So let's kind of get the physicality and the voice is higher pitched and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we kind of started with that and then through rehearsals we kind of fleshed out a little bit and we said actually the the script is so good and the it's so well written that it doesn't need that. Sometimes it's just nicer to come from a more older perspective. So we've kind of aged them a little bit in kind of our physicality, our voice, and it has a much more, I don't know, deep impact. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, when, when I was pre-casting, we could, you, you can technically do this with children playing the right mm. age. So scouts, what? Eight, eight, nine. Yeah. Gem was probably twelve, going thirteen. So I originally thought that actually we'd we'd cast it with teenagers, you know, from the, mm -hmm. some because I've got some really good teenagers who come to acting classes each week, and that's that's what I was kind of thinking at first. But then when I read the play, I just thought actually, I think to have adults play them, not sort of like the Blood Brothers scenario where they they play seven, eight, ten year olds, and it goes through that transition, but actually. As Tony just mentioned there, to give it a bit more weight and maturity, because I think it does add something to it. So, and we kind of discovered that actually it's the innocence of the writing that carries the performance, if you see what I mean. So they don't have to be, you know, ten-year-olds putting on, you know, a, a childlike voice or anything. And I think it really works, and it does give give the the play a bit more gravitas than say working with kids. That's not to say you can't do it with kids, because of course you can. But I just think it gives something slightly different working with, with adults playing those roles. Um, even though the Broadway version and the West End, they are using adults as well. Not that we're copying, because it's just a, a choice that we made. Um, so I never really thought of using children, to be honest. Uh, initially, it was just going to be teenagers. But then, as I say, reading it, I just thought, actually, you know, and people like Tony and Alice and Samuel Turk playing Dill, you know, do a great job. And the central themes as well of it obviously are quite intense, and mm -hmm. but there, there are also issues that are quite timely and, and poignant to be bringing up right now as well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean it's unfortunate because I when I read the play because I haven't read the novel and seen the film with Gregory Peck since nineteen ninety six, and I haven't watched the film. I've made a choice not to because I don't want to just copy you know Gregory Peck's Atticus mm -hmm. Finch. I just thought I'd because if I did watch the film, I know I'd pick up some mannerisms and gestures and so on. I, I didn't want to do that. Um, but in terms of the, the, the actual themes, when I read the play, it is quite shocking, some of the, the language, because it is based around racism, injustice, and so on. And you can't take, you can't water it down. It is what it is. It's 1935 Alabama, set on a backdrop of, of you know, racism and this this ideology that black people are somewhat inferior and not to be treated as equal. So it has that shocking element, um, and those themes are completely relevant today you know unfortunately and that's just the nature of of racism i mean it's just we're, we're far more aware now obviously with social media um but as well as those themes it's not all heavy heavy there are some nice moments and you know there is some humor there is some you know uh lighter moments with the relationships and so on although obviously the, the central theme is you know the the element of racism and justice and so on and likes with with harper lee you know she she wrote this on the, the base the characters around the people she grew up with in in Alabama and her father was a lawyer and she's based Atticus Finch on her father and her father was actually working on a case in I think it's if I get this wrong Mon Monroeville I think and mm -hmm. Alabama is, is the real place so he was working on a similar case to what Atticus Finch was working on and the characters that she's sort of crafted into the novel and and uh, Christopher Sergal has adapted for the play are based on real people so it's actually has a, a lot of realism to it, even though it's, you know, for the theatre. Mm -hmm. uh, the It needs emotional depth and substance when it's on stage because, you know, it can't just be an approach of saying the lines and physicalise it, maybe just doing an accent. It's not enough. It needs that truth. And, you know, it needs the actors to, to live and experience the circumstances in many ways so that, you know, it... it, it you know, if people, I, I, I presume most people who are coming to watch it have read the story, read the novel, and have enjoyed the novel, maybe watched the film. So, you know, and, and we know it has that realism to it, and that's what we're 
we're going to try and convey him on the stage. And you mentioned accents there. Has that been a struggle, Tony? And I have to say, your Alabama accent is really good. It sounds very natural oh, and, and doesn't drop at all. Uh, it's something you have to really work at, somewhere. or is it? You know, is it something that comes naturally to you? Um, a bit of both. There are some accents that I struggle with. Oh, luckily this isn't one of them. But there are some that I just can't hear, and then my accent goes all over the place, and suddenly I end, you know, in three diff- three countries over. Um, <laughs> but this one was all right, I think. I don't know why. Mm. It just kind of I found a a place for it either in my in my register, which had to change because I naturally was doing the accent a lot higher, higher pitch, because we were doing it slightly younger. But that's changed now, and it's all right. Luckily, we got. Um, there are so many kind of, um, what's the word? There are so many resources. Resources, thank you. Resources for accents and things like that online now. And you can just kind of, there are books everywhere on how to do either accents in general, kind of if you want to just regionalize them or to do like really specific accents. Or with like we did a YouTube video on how to do a general Alabama accent or general Southern American accent, which kind of gives you a lot of, room to maneuver if you can't get mm-hmm. quite specific Alabama you can kind of go to a more southern state and it still kind of fits within the scope of the play so yeah I think yeah all right not as hot I don't know <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think uh, the southern accent is actually easier to do than general American because mm. I think because it's quite melodic um, there are similarities between our English dialect to the deep south I mean it has been interesting at the start rehearsal certainly you know, a lot, a lot, of, for, a lot of Forest Gumps. Yeah, you go from <laughs> a lot yeah. of Forest Gumps. You go Alabama to Scotland to you know, God knows Wales. But actually, no. I mean, I have to say that everyone's accent now is is really good, and it's just a question of, you know, you have to drill, and you've got to get that muscle memory in in how it in how it's pronounced and so on, which you know just takes time. And what about playing father and son? Then how do you two get on in that respect? <laughs> Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we get on very well. But the the actual relationship between Jem and Atticus is really complicated, um, and it's a lot more complicated than it on than it seems on first first watch or first read through. Um, and in actual fact, there's not a lot of you're quite a cold father, aren't you? But um, a real kind of I don't know hallelujah moment for me when going over the script and looking into research of character stuff and was when I found when I kind of drew the line between Atticus the man and Atticus the father I think Jem really idolizes him as the man you know the the pillar of the community the lawyer that will take on any case and fight for injustice and go against the kind of social norms of the time and really kind of stand out and the fact that Atticus the dad you know won't play football with him won't throw and catch with him won't kind of give him the necessary the love Mm -hmm. and the affection there's no point where he puts his arm around me or anything like that and he has a lot more of a kind of close relationship with my sister Scout and that's the kind of I don't know that father son father daughter relationship and how the kind of the differences that are there and with his age being a certain age, going through mm. the teenage years, it is a bit like a well. I want to be treated like a man, but I'm also a boy. You know, throw and catch. We I want to have those kind of nice moments, and it is. It sometimes gets a little tough, doesn't it? We have our we've got heads a few times, but as characters, not as human <laughs> beings. But um, yeah, it's yeah. it's been a lot of fun to kind of mm. find find the right tone for that relationship. I just finally, Carl, we should mention that Colin as well. Normally, he'd be here, of course. You, you're normally sort of co-directing and, and mm-hmm. acting as well. And Colin's sort of chief director. He is still chief director, but from afar, as they say. Yeah, via Zoom, mm. which has been interesting. I mean, I, I think we've we've made it work because you have to, you know, you have to get on with it. It's not ideal because when, you know, we set it up in the rehearsal space, you know, he's watching via Zoom and it's just a flat picture for him. So I'm having to sort of communicate as well as like playing one of the leads you know, to communicate actually that that isn't right because, you know, the perspective of the camera isn't picking up what I'm seeing in the space. So it's sort of going back and forth. And some things that he thinks looks okay, I have to say, actually, no, it doesn't because of X, Y, and Z. But that's all to do with perspective. But I think, to be honest, we've, um, you know, in terms of staging, I mean, we go into the theatre on Monday and we have to top and tail certain scenes and work it on the stage. I think, to be honest, it hasn't been a major issue We've got there, even though I've had to communicate kind of 
uh, assistant director slash playing Atticus slash producing it slash getting up all the props slash 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 but you know we, we've get there you just have to and, and to be honest after lockdown after not doing anything since I think the last one I did was was Alice and then before that was Cinderella you know so I haven't really done anything for two years so it's just a, 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 a blessing just to be able to you know do something in the theatre again and like, yeah and that's on behalf of the whole kind of UK and the wider yeah, world yeah, like yeah, you absolutely. know we are there's already been two shows mm. you've had Shrek mm. you've had um Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz yeah. which is on yeah. now yeah. and I mean theatres are only just starting to open in the UK and wider afield and I mean we get to be on there on Monday I, mm. can't, I literally cannot wait I just can't wait to walk on the gate stage again it's so good <laughs>